Hello and welcome to the Stealth Action AI Kit. I'm going to show you really quickly the feature level and I'm going really quickly over the features. And I'll try to explain as quickly as possible because I want to keep this video under 20 minutes long if possible. And I'm going more in depth uh, for the feature in a different video. So let's jump straight into it. So right now we are in the dark room. We have a debug for our lights and we have a placeholder night vision that allows us to see in pure pitch black situation. If we get into a sunlight, we are visible, otherwise we are not. And you can see that by the rays debug. When one of the rays hits our body, we're visible. We also have different lights that depending how far you are and how much the light is hitting you, you're visible or not. We're going directly over here. Also note that the animations are all placeholder. It's highly suggested that you use your own animation. Same goes for the player. All the code, all the code in the player is placeholder because this kit is more centered on the AI code. If you want to read all the things over here, you should pause the video and read them. I'm gonna, every time that we see one of these boxes, I'm gonna zoom in just for a second and then move on. So, these AIs have visibility and they're using proximity range. Proximity range is a variable that will be used only if the AI is using visibility and the player is not visible. This AI will be able to spot you if you get into 5 meters range, so as soon as you hit 500, the AI will spot you. This other one will only see you if you go into the sunlight. This other AI is not affected by visibility and as soon as you walk, like even from over here, this AI will spot you. AIs will also print your, they will take a snapshot of your last seen location that will disappear after a few seconds. This other AI is using visibility but as a parameter of 25%. So when I hit 25%, that AI will be able to see me, like this. So if you crouch, you, use a, you lose a little bit of visibility. Now we're going to talk about the most important thing of the kit, activation and performance. Performance are tremendously important, and that's why we have a set of, a set of variables that we can use and this AI will be activated only if I get into 3 meters range so uh, let me do just that so until you get into 3 meters the AI won't be active same goes for this other AI if I get into 200 in 2 meters range the AI will be active if I kill it right over here when it's dead the tick event for the dead will be active but when they're alive and not active, the tick event, the perception, everything is off. So this AI is not active and the body and the gun will last for 60 minutes. But if I get to 15 meters, the body will disappear. Since the, this AI is not active, we'll just patrol the area back and forth. And even if I touch it, nothing will happen. This AI, it's like a walking dead. You can have like a hundred of these unactive AIs patrolling that will use pretty much close to zero resources. Let me move into visibility detection and detection. Bit cheesy the title, but you will see now. So these are the variables. One AI, this one on the left, is able to see until 35 meter, uh, 35 meters uh, sight range and this other AI has a 5 meters sight range so even if I'm perfectly visible over here that AI is not able to see me but this other AI will spot me right away and has a 11 meters attack range this AI will only see me if I get closer than 5 meters because we can set up the sight range this AI will handle the example for the disguise. The disguise is something that we can pick up from the dead bodies will act as the clothes of the AI. This, all these three AIs can see at 35 meters 
you can read all the settings. This AI can hear sounds outside the this guy's range and this AI can detect the disguised player within th three meters. All these AIs are active, so that means they can sense, touch and all the other things. So if I touch one of these AIs without getting closer three meters from that, I touch it and I become hostile. When you become hostile for one of the AIs and they are able to see you, your disguise will be compromised and you need to ditch it. The sight range are handled also for drones. When you are in control of a drone, even if this AI has a sight range of 50 meters, the AI won't be able to see you until you fly closer than 4 meters. You can set up every single thing that you want in the details panel. Let me go forward. We're gonna talk about dead bodies real quick. You can see all the variables over here. And also dead bodies. We have eye lights. You can decide if you turn them on and off. And I'm gonna quickly tap them to show you that we have four colors preset for the highlight uh, or no color preset. Here we're gonna have a little event. You can read all the event over here. And I'm gonna quickly explain. We are disabling the footsteps. This AI is only able to see dead bodies. This AI is only able to hear dead bodies. That AI is not able to hear or see dead bodies. And I'm going to kill this AI and after two seconds both of these AIs will try to reach the body. The first AI to reach the body will destroy it and will send all the AIs into alert status. The alert status, the AI will start navigating in a random point in the navigation radius. Right now you can see the settings that I'm using for these AIs and they are using a radius alert. Right now, when they're done with the alert status, they will resume what they were doing before. Since all these AIs were in idle state, they will just be back in idle state and do nothing. If they were patrolling, they will go back to patrolling state. Right now, these two AIs are on searching state, but they're not able to reach a search point because we didn't set up any. We also have a range alert that AI can alert from range without reaching the body and we also have an area alert. Area alert is a box that is like right now in that over there and when this AI sees this dead body it will notify all the AIs in the alert box. You can create really interesting situations. We're gonna talk about the idle and patrol behavior right now. You can read the settings over here but there are many more. All these AIs are not active. Uh, this one is purely idle. This one is idling as playing an animation as a prone. And this one is playing random animations. And this other AI is just patrolling on these four points that you can see. This is for debug purposes. And this AI is patrolling like the other AI that is going into random points, but every each single point that is the AI is navigating has different settings, different wait times, different animation to play, and you can set up every animation you play. You can decide the loops, the blend time, the waiting times. You can decide if the AI has to wait time after playing the animation or if it, it has to ignore the wait time and just using the time of the animation. You can pretty much decide everything you want. This other AI, as you can see, is patrolling the area, has a, <clears throat> a set of points. It can jump the gap, as you can see right now. The jump is experimental, you can use it if you want. Then when it de detects something, it can crouch, it can vault, crouch again, climb obstacles, vaulting, climbing. Really easy. This other AI is navigating through a nerd duct, we could say. AIs can also navigate through those with no problems. Now we're going to talk really quickly about the hostile state. The hostile state, you can see we kind of have a few settings. 
This AI on the left has a fire rate of an assault rifle, the other AI every half a second we shoot, and the AI on the right uh, has no strafing and this AI will strafe. Also the AI on the left is shooting on the head and this one is shooting on the spine. You can configure all the settings into the shooting uh, category in the details panel. This one has a radius alert for calling for help, the variable call for help. So that AI, if even if they don't get hit by the call for help, the AI will still be able to hear the shooting of their friendlies. So When they shoot, they will make noise and the other AIs will path to the direction to the sound and then when, when they see the player, they will turn hostile. Otherwise, they will turn hostile right away as soon as the call for help is called. Over here, it's really some important stuff to read. Over here, we have that AI that is just standing over there and it's not affected by the area alert, uh, area trigger, sorry that is over there and the area trigger this is the master AI that is connected to the area trigger as soon as these AI will spot me it will send the target as myself to those two AIs so and that AI can only hear sounds of this AI shooting so when that AI hears the sound of his friendly shooting, it will turn, we'll see the player and go hostile. I'm not even going to look at him because I want you guys to see when this AI goes hostile, it will notify those. And when those are notified, they will haunt the player. The body disappeared because uh, I've set the range to 50 meters or something. You can decide pretty much everything, it's up to you. Grenades are tricky and they have really a lot of settings. They can throw grenades in three modes. They can throw a normal frag grenade if they can see you and you're standing here. And they can throw a grenade over the wall if they detect a wall. Please note that uh, the animations are placeholder and I suggest that you make your own. Also, if they detect that they have a roof on, over their head, First, they will normal throw if they see you. If they don't see you, they will throw a flashbang that sometimes they will fail. Over here, flashbang. I didn't, I didn't fiddle too much with the settings, but you can decide pretty much everything. Same goes if they find a roof on top of your head and not their head. So I'm going over here. It will detect a roof. So we'll throw a flashbang on the last seen player location. Cameras, turrets. Cameras have a lot of settings that you can use. And health. They can scout the area, stay fixed on a location. You can decide pretty much what you want. Also, you have fixed cameras that you have to overlap in order to trigger the alarm. And another camera that is fixed, but as soon as it gets you as a target, it will track you until it loses track of you. You can change a lot of settings on the camera. There is also a, cu a custom cone trace that is really handy. This camera is connected to those two lights, turret and AI. So as soon as this camera detects me, everything will go hostile. The turret will shoot me, the AI will go hostile. But if we kill the camera, everything will turn off. Cameras have another efficient way that can be used for your project. You can check the cameras via render target. And you can also trigger secondary events. So it depends on how you want to structure your level. I'm going to walk on this and kill that AI. As soon as the camera detects the dead body, it will send a signal to that AI. That AI will turn, see the dead body, and proceeds to the dead body location. When the AI reaches the body, it will grab it and will send an alert status to all the nearest AI and it will go into alert status itself. 
Also, cameras can be connected to doors. So the first door, you can read what's happening. When this camera is dead, this door will open. When that camera is dead, the door will stay open anyway. And if that camera detected me, it would have closed the door. And this one will close the door if it detects me. And if you destroy the camera, it will close the door. This other camera is not connected to the door. And this door can only be opened by using the drone. So even if I kill the camera and I can do whatever I want, I will not be able to cross that point. So you need a drone for this. Because the drone has the hacking as well. And I missed. And I missed again. And I opened the door. So. This is pretty much it. Over there, there is a surprise for the people who got a package. And that's pretty much it for the quick overview. But before I stop the video, I'm going to show you one thing really quickly. I'm going to select this random AI. And these are all the settings that you can change on the AI. For, from the activation and performance, from the movement in each state, and from the shooting, from the hostile behavior, idle and patrol behavior, visibility and detection, all the grenade settings, all the override settings, all the general setup, the sounds and animations that he has to play on different scenarios, and the, some debugs parameter, the experimental feature for teaming, and this is not implemented yet, it's not fully tested, and it's just placeholder for the moment and I'm keeping this for a future update. Also you can set up voice lines and you can play them randomly. You have random chance to play a voice line or you can toggle this off and always play voice lines. And then you have all the dead body settings and that's pretty much it for all the settings. There is a lot of things that you can do with this AI and there is a lot of things that you can configure and tweak at your desire. This was really just a really quick overview. I tried to be quick at least because there is a lot of features on this AI that you can configure and tweak. But I'm going to do some different videos where I'm going to be explaining more in depth every single feature from patrolling to searching to how sounds and how they perceive sounds all this kind of things so thank you for staying with me until the end and i'll see you next time